You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 19th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where drift glass still stings from the injustice of nearly failing high school biology, even though he has, quote, a natural instinct for science. It's the professional left with drift glass and blue gal. Natural instinct story is. Yeah, Donald Trump has a natural instinct for science, Blue Gal. He doesn't need all that <laughs> book learning, all that knowledge. Because you know, as as you know, scientists always operate under a political agenda. Yes, that oh, is knew that. Uh, crazy yeah. lefty liberal leftington liber- And so, you know, he he has to personally see the scientists, you know, and feel their tits apparently, <laughs> um, and and to know whether or not they're being honest with him about what's really going on in science. And he can do that because he has a, quote, natural instinct for science. Natural instinct. That doesn't require studying or reading or anything, no. right? No, 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 no. <laughs> much, like, much like his natural instinct for business, which is to fail over and over and over again, piss away every million or 10 million or 100 million your father gave you, and then go into hock to Russian gangsters to prop up your lifestyle and make you president. So he has that natural instinct. He has a natural instinct for women. In the same way, <laughs> he has an actual instinct for the truth. You know, he knows it when he sees it, and he flees like a son of a bitch uh-huh. from it every time it gets near him. So he is the opposite of everything decent in human beings ever. And the the one thing you know, people were really reluctant to talk about was, I'm not going to talk about his son Baron. No, um, no, who's, I'm sure just a fine young man, and I'm not going to say a word about him. But you see his kids, the criminal thugs. And posers and imbeciles and and hollow shells of a human being he raised, he sucks at everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything he's a horror. He's horrible at everything except conning bigots and imbeciles into giving him their uh, votes. Yeah, that's he's the one really thing he's good at uh, labeling and marketing and marketing himself. Repeat. Yeah, to people right. who will Repeat buy it. One dumbass message over yeah. and over again until people go. You know, I think Trump University is my answer. I can get my way out of poverty if I just give this man a lot of money and then it doesn't turn out right and you end up 30000 in debt and you have no future. And then you must, at that point, uh, turn to your nearest liberal and say, why did Obama do this to me? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's how you operate inside the the uh, conservative universe. But yes, that that little quote there uh, is from our, our good friend uh, uh, and supporter of the podcast, uh, Donald John Trump. <laughs> I wonder which is the bigger uh, lift for Republican congressional candidates, incumbent Republican congressional candidates, yes. is the bigger lift. Mm-hmm. No, I'm all for coverage of pre-existing conditions, even though they voted mm-hmm. 11 to 70 times right. to destroy yes. the Affordable Care Act. Yes. Or is the heavier lift, everything is fine <laughs> yes. in terms of Donald Trump being president. Uh, Which is the heavier lift there for well, them? You know, as they as they show on the uh, uh, the, the show American Gods, yes, uh, you put your soul on a scale uh-huh. in, in Egyptian religion, and if you if your soul is is heavier than a feather, then you burn in hell. Yeah. Um, the only reason I say that is because the only analogy I can think of with a with a scale in it mm-hmm. to stall for time. Well, I come up with a, my real answer, it, which is there's no lift at all. Yeah. You can tell these meatheads anything and they'll believe it. Yep. That's what that's what being a Republican is so easy. You don't have to believe anything. Yeah. You can just say sh- whatever shit you want and, and reverse yourself tomorrow and the next day because the people you're talking to come pre-programmed. They, are, they have compartmentalized in their brain two entirely different sets of principles, yeah. one of which they hold dearly and will swear on the lives of their children they believe when Barack Obama is in office or any Democrat is in yeah. office. And a completely opposite, reversed, inverted, other set of principles they believe and swear on the lives of their children they believe when there was a Republican talking. Yep. And they, they they and the software in between those two that would allow a person with, you know, a conscience to notice the fact that you don't believe anything. You just reverse yourself. You just make shit up and don't care as long as you make the libs cry. That moral piece is entirely missing from their makeup. Well, and Drift Glass, that reminds me of uh 
post that I was asked to write and did write at Crooks and Liars this morning, I wouldn't have written it otherwise. But uh, covering Eric Trump on Fox and Friends is part of my oh, job. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not just a job, Lou Gal. It's, it's an, an adventure. adventure. Mm-hmm. The, the way I wrote the post, however, was really about does anyone believe what he's saying? Is anyone actually listening to what he's saying? Is anyone recording what he's saying in their minds? And Eric mm-hmm. Trump was saying things like, we have absolutely no investment in Saudi Arabia or Russia. Well, sure. that's because they have invested in you. They, you have, mm-hmm. they have given you money for entire floors at Trump Tower and right. laundered money to buy con- using condo purchases from your dad. And they, he is in bed with them because they are covering his ass in terms of purchases, mm-hmm. in terms of loans, et cetera. Uh, and and bailing out, uh, you know, the the uh, Qatar government bailed out Jared. Uh, these mm-hmm. there is business interest, there is uh, collusion <laughs> between these countries and Donald Trump's pocketbook. Uh, but was anyone really listening to Eric Trump? First of all, I don't think Eric Trump knows what truth is. He just spews out what his daddy is going to want to hear. Right. Uh, the Hosts at Fox and Friends don't care what he says. They're they're no. they've got a, a earpiece in their ear telling them when time's up, and then they're done. You know, thanks for being on Eric Trump. We're so glad to have you, and they're on to commercial. So, is in all of that charade, is anything real? Is anything? Does anything? And it matters because it fills a space in the Republican psyche that Eric Trump was on. He defended Donald Trump, and therefore everything's okay. But it's comfortable yeah. pablum for comfortable people. We we will post on our uh, on our blogs, uh, and certainly on our podcast website. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the clip from the just popped into my head from Senator Rourke, the fictional senator played by Powers Booth in Sin City, who is holding a gun on um, uh, Bruce Willis in the hospital, and explaining to him how lies work, mm. yeah. and that. You know, once once you get them believing something they know in their heart ain't so, you got them by the balls. Yeah, I could kill you right here in front of all these people and get away with it. Yeah, and that's uh, because what's that's happened, how lies right? Work. That's what's that's how happened. lies work. And every one of these reprogrammable meatbags who vote Republican are the same people who went from cheering for George Bush to swearing on the lives of their children they never heard of George yep. Bush. Yep. And the reason we are in this fucking fix today is that they were allowed to get away with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, the number of infinite mulligans that Republicans get from the media and from um, otherwise intelligent liberals, I'm talking now about never Trumpers, um, is astonishing to me. There, There is no, you, as far as I'm concerned, if you're a Republican, you used up all your second chances and goodwill sometime around 1998. Oh, I was going to say 1974, but you want to give them that sure. much? Okay, sure. fine. Sure. I, I will take you all I will take you all the way to the to the era of Newt Gingrich and Rush Limbaugh. And and the moment when you if you had any intelligence at all. Remember these are people who allegedly know what the Republican Party was, who quote Ronald Reagan all the time, who are who are reverent to the history of the party. And but they yada 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 over about thirty years of their own involvement in their own party, and then they land on Donald Trump. How did this happen? What 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 in the world happened here? If you left the party in nineteen ninety two or three or four, once Limbaugh was fully established as the leader of the Republican Party and the voice of Republicans from coast to coast, and and Gingrich politics was now Republican politics. That's just it. There's no distinction between the two. That's the way things are going to be from now on. Then great, but if you if you have been skating on this bullshit for a quarter of a century now, and all of a sudden you're noticing the Republican Party is full of Republicans, oh my God, how this shit happen? I have no fucking time for you. But if you're willing, I will sit down and explain to you in very small words that you will understand how your own fucking party works. You see, you turned a whole bunch of people into reprogrammable meat bags so you could win elections. I'm going to stop you there. Because we got to move on to our new sponsor. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Our new sponsor is Drift Glass Rage Time. Rage Time. Are you? <laughs> do you find yourself just going on and on about what these fucking? No, that's not our new. That'll be our new sponsor next week. 
<laughs> I, uh, it used to be called whiskey, but now it's just called Rage Drip Glass Tonic. Rage Tonic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, uh, ask for it by name. It is a boom time for our friends at Hello Fascist. They it have is. a new logo, which I posted to Twitter this week, and I'll put on our Facebook page and website uh, as an ad. Uh, Hello Fascist. This week's featured meal at Hello Fascist is the Cucker Tarlson. Older than it looks white meat chicken on a white bun. Are you a Trump official or Fox News personality tired of having your moral depravity called out every time you dine out? Try Hello Fascist at-home meal kits. When you know dining out will remind you that you put babies in cages. Hello Fascist, because at this point, literally everyone is peeing in your food. Yep. Everyone. I want you to talk to Class about going to... Uh, a debate between our current congressman and our future congressman. And I want to explain to everyone that I did not go to this debate uh, primarily because my emotional state will not allow me to be in the same room with my Republican congressman at the moment. So uh, I explained to Drift Glass that, you know, if I sit there and listen to him lie about health insurance, I'm going to cry. And uh but he Drift Glass was very kind about that and said, you do not have to go. So, uh, but you went and tell us how it went. This was Betsy Dirksen Londrigan, who is running for Congress on the Democratic ticket, primarily on the issue of health care. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's a former aide to Senator Dick Durbin. She is. And uh, the current Congressman Rodney Davis is a former aide as well mm-hmm. to uh, John Shimkus. King of coal. Uh, so... Uh, they have that. They have that in common. <laughs> um, Betsy yeah. Dirksen Lonergan has never run for public office before, mm-hmm. um, and she had a child who was terribly ill, and uh, uh, he's fine now. But frankly, if the Republicans had had their way, her child would have died, mm-hmm. or her family would have been bankrupt, or both. Um, and that was just like that was her wake up call. Watching Rodney Davis not just vote eleven times to get rid of insurance that would have saved her kid's life but spiked the ball in the end zone by going to a beer party at the White House to celebrate the fact they did it. She said, that's it. I'm done. We're going to run now. Um, And she has gotten a lot of help. She knows uh, wonderful people. Uh, She, again, has very good ties and is very good friends with the German family. Um, And so she's doing really well. And and I've watched her campaign. Uh, I I knock doors for her. You know, I I do what I can do to help her win. Like everyone out there should. Go find a candidate. Go knock some goddamn doors. Go phone bank. Uh, get out the vote. Uh, drives are coming up really soon. That's you know that's do when postcards. You, yeah. Yep. Uh, it's it. You can still do early voting in lots of places. You can still vote by mail in lots of places. Go do those things. Go look them up. It's not that hard. If I can figure this shit out, anybody can do it. Mm-hmm. I walk and the- vote dot org has all of the information. V o t e dot org. Mm-hmm. will point you to where you need to go to get all of that done. And right. you don't you don't need to just sort of pull a clipboard out of your garage and go wandering through the streets because if you go to a campaign office, they'll actually give you that stuff and tell you how things work and give you a, probably a, a really cool piece of software called Minivan that lets you record everything you're doing as you're doing it uh, to make data entry and, and, and analytics much, much easier. Um, but there's just lots of things you can do that are very easy to do if you are um, – not able of not capable of walking. If you're, uh, if you're just not comfortable doing it, they can do. They, you can do phone banking. You can do data entry. You can do all kinds of things, and they're they're happy to do that. So that's where a lot of um, my time is going this year. That immigration right. and uh, neighborhood redevelopment uh, in in the, on the east side of Springfield that has been woefully overlooked. Plus a bunch of other things I'm volunteering for. I tell you, my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no actual revenue coming in from any of this which really yeah. is troubling to yeah. me but um as long as i'm uh at liberty as the vaudevillians say i figure why not put my time to good use helping my community and one of the best ways to help my community is make sure rodney davis doesn't represent me in congress anymore right he's an right. asshole and he needs right. to go um <laughs> so i went to the debate you're right Blue i Gal. think that should be a radio ad right yeah. there <laughs> well isn't it though really isn't it um One of the best ways to help my community is make sure Rodney Davis doesn't represent me in Congress anymore. Because he's an asshole, and he needs to go. Uh, <laughs> it, it was, let me set the stage, Blue Gal. And you walk in, and it's and actually, in this case, they, it was a ticketed event, which is mm-hmm. rare. 
uh, because it was held at the headquarters of the State Journal Register, uh, which is a large building with very few people in it because it's a newspaper and all the people that yeah. used to work there have been laid off. So the room uh, probably holds 300, 350 people. It was near capacity, not 100% capacity, but they had gotten something like 900 responses on Facebook within two days. <laughs> so they said, yeah, sure. okay, sure. we're going to have to slow the roll down here a bit. But uh, so it was very, uh, it was wonderful. Um, I went and I lost, saw lots of friends and neighbors there. I saw lots of uh, Betsy supporters there. So we nodded and we high-fived and we were happy to see each other. And it was a televised debate. It was also on the radio and it was well run. Uh, the interlocutor, the, the timekeepers, et cetera, uh, were terrific. Uh, I will say that the funniest unintentional punchline of the week goes to local radio personality, Jim Leach, mm -hmm. who was the uh, moderator. Because Rodney Davis had to, went over a couple of times his time allotment. And so over the, over the PA system, you heard this voice of doom going, Congressman, your time is up. Like, <laughs> and, I, and, then, and if you listen carefully, you can hear an asshole laughing in the back row. That would be me. Uh, <laughs> and we were, we were warned repeatedly, uh, no, just like this, the things you always see on televised debates. No outbursts, right. no throwing tomatoes, no spontaneous or non-spontaneous demonstrations of emotion. That went... 90 percent well but rodney davis said some shit that was so ridiculous and so stupid and so false that people laughed at him nobody oh, said wow. bullshit nobody threw rotten tomatoes but they laughed at him which was very bad <laughs> because they and laughed when he lied credit. about health insurance yes yes they yes, did they, did. they, laughed, when, they laughed when we got uh, onto lincoln's hat so rodney davis got there i don't know 15 minutes early uh, i know what he looks like because he is my representative and you should really know things like this he walked in and nobody noticed. He walked in with a couple of people. Nobody said a word. He walked up to the table. He did what you do before a debate. You check the room out. You check the microphone and stuff. All well and good. Betsy Dirksen walked in. Uh, Betsy Dirksen Lonergan walked in and she got a standing ovation. Oh, my goodness. From two thirds of the people there. Wow. That was sustained because it's like, all right, we're, we're going to have to be quiet and play nice in about five minutes. But mm -hmm. right now, boom, boom, you know, we will rock you. It was yeah. it was amazing. Uh, it started off scattered, then it got big, then everyone got up on their feet, and that was like, okay, all right. We see who has the momentum going into this. Yeah. Uh, and then I took a, a – I did – I used to be a high school debater, and so I knew – I know how you fold a paper in eight, in eight columns across and you write notes down. That failed me immediately because, <laughs> because in debate you have one topic and each person goes back and forth and back and forth and you draw arrows. This was just question, 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 question. Yeah. But um, they both did uh, – acceptably well but really she won uh because the test of anyone going up against an incumbent is can you see this person taking this other person's job and the answer is absolutely um she was calm and she was funny she was loose she knew her facts she was very very good at bringing things back home to the many town hall meetings she has and how it's really an insult to voters if you don't look them in the face and talk to them directly and and how the many town halls I've done here. And you know what? The town hall meeting I was at, because Rodney Davis does not do town halls. He does not believe in them. Yes. Because people like my wife show up and, and yell at him for trying to take That's our right. health care away. That's right. Um, and so Rodney Davis had to say, well, you know, I, I, I deal with my constituents, you know, one on one in my office during office hours. And those people just started laughing mm -hmm. because it was, mm -hmm. it was clear he was losing that argument. Mm -hmm. The do you have actual contact with your constituents and know what they want and know what they mean? Um, she talked a lot about health care, just hammered home how many times, you know, repeatedly how many times he voted to, to get rid of it. And he kept saying, I voted for pre-existing pre conditions. And uh, my wife uh, is, is a colon cancer survivor, which is true. And it, that's good. I'm glad she, she survived. But it was bullshit because yeah. – yeah. And, and and Betsy had her numbers like, no, no, no. The, the Congressional Budget Office and everyone else who scores these things say, if we had done things your way, something – tens of millions of people would have lost their insurance. Mm -hmm. There's just no argument about this. This is what you ran on and now you're running away from it. Uh, but she was funny. She she took him on on his ads. Uh, he talked about how in, in her ad, his special interest group uh, is coming after me and my wife and coming after my family. And she said, you know what? If anybody comes after your family – I'll be. I'll stand up for you first, but let's talk about your ads. What the fuck is it with this Lincoln hat nonsense? This Lincoln hat nonsense. Yeah. Yes. yes. And it was this, you know, thing that a bunch of people, a, a collection that uh, the museum bought, and it, it put them in financially in the red. 
but it, somehow she became Mike Madigan's crony. Yeah. Um, and the problem with Rodney Davis is he has an actual record. Exactly. And, he, and, he and it's a bad to, record and his ideas are terrible. Yes. Yep. And he wants, to, so he wants to be on both sides of, of all issues. So you know what his default position was, Blue Gal? You know what it was? Socialism. I'm bipartisan. I'm I work on both sides. Oh my God. On both sides of the aisle. You know, I worked across the aisle. You know, we wouldn't have basically kids in cages. The Democrats had come together with Republicans to solve this problem. And he, it really was, I'm, I'm a bipartisan across the aisle working son of a bitch. Wow. And, you know, I work because both sides really blue gal, you know, and it was about civility and, and our language and our, and, and Betsy jerks and Londergren is very good at saying, look, I have town halls <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. at my town halls, which are free to the public and which people attend Republicans come Democrats come libertarians come. I'll talk to anybody, but she turned his bullshit. Both sides are really, you know, the problem. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just a middle of the road kind of guy. You know me, I'm a farmer. I went to high school with your kids with yeah. her saying, no, 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 you you're hiding out from your constituents. Yeah. I'm talking to them and I talk to everybody. And when I go, to Washington as your congressperson, I will represent everyone. I will be represented. I, I, I will go against my party sometimes. I'll support them sometimes. But I'm going to represent Illinois 13, which basically is something you don't do. Yep. And yep. They talked about this tax cut and how great it is. And she said, no, it's, it's it, the deficit's going through the roof and everyone knows it. And you're lying if you say otherwise. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't, you know burst into flames and crawl away because right. that would have been right. the, the end of the election right there. And I believe there's another debate. There's like three of them. I think one tonight in Champaign. But she really stepped into the ring ready to fight and she did a tremendous job. Well, and this ad about the Lincoln hat thing that we talked about last week, it they mentioned in an editorial in the State Journal Register. Yes, it did. Today. That this week. It really yeah. was. It really was the Abraham Lincoln Museum that purchased right. this hat. And along with 1,399 other artifacts yes. <laughs> uh, in a collection, uh, this hat is from the 19th century. It is dated. Mm -hmm. uh, they are able to carbon date it as being from Lincoln's time and Lincoln's uh, geographical region. They have some documentation. They're mm -hmm. just not sure that it ever actually belonged to Abraham Lincoln. Right. I can't verify that. Uh, and, uh, but that is one of 1400 artifacts that were purchased for the Abraham Lincoln presidential library. This is right. not, uh, <laughs> the country club, right. You know, all right. That we're throwing taxpayer money down the drain. Yeah. Uh, and they did go into debt to purchase this and, yeah, they did. Yep. uh, they are looking for help from the state legislature to see if they can pay off some of that because it is a you know diamond in the crown of the state of illinois to have lincoln artifacts in springfield where lincoln practiced law hello yeah. we basically uh, have one commodity here yeah <laughs> and it, and lincoln. There's, there's a lot of other things but lincoln's face is everywhere it's plastered on everything everywhere. the tomb is two miles this from is, the house this, and that's tourism yeah. i mean that's this is the second is. most famous cemetery in the united states yeah yeah. Um, and it, we get hundreds of thousands of visitors a year from all over the world. So it's mm -hmm. a big deal. Mm -hmm. But it's such a, it, it really is like Rodney Davis put up banners to support his candidacy. You know who else liked banners? Hitler did. <laughs> Rodney Davis. You know, it's that kind of like it you, is. you stop it just is. for a second and wonder, is this a parody? No, uh, we nobody did. Could, we said that last week. We thought this ad was a yeah. parody. Nobody it could be that makes stupid. No sense. And, it makes there no are, sense. Yeah. There are plenty of people here in Springfield. Uh, in the district, I shouldn't say in Springfield because the district does. It's a, a diagonal district that goes, you know, uh, across all the way up to Champaign. So there's yep. lots of lots of territory. It's gerrymandered to hopefully make help a Democrat win in farm yeah. country. That yeah. is what it is. Yeah, and it's a close race because we are in the middle of Donald Trump country. Right. Make no mistake about it. We are not in Georgia, where they are just telling busloads of African American people you can't vote. African-American senior citizens, yeah. they can't that, vote. That's a good look. You know, yeah. that's, that's, let's make it hell, really man. personal, right? <laughs> so it's not it's not Alabama, yeah. but it's bad. Um, but it, it there's this squeamish kind of like, you just know that a lot of people really are uncomfortable. 
and can't admit it and can't otherwise talk about it because once you're once you break bad with the Republican club in the area, you have to go live on an island somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> because right. because it's you know I, we know who all the liberals are. And and we don't you know punch each other in the face during meetings. Um, you know when we talk in public, we, you know we get along reasonably well. But it really is in this area. There's a Republican tribe. Yeah, and you're either yeah. a member of it, in which case you know you're going to be on the Chamber of Commerce and you're going to be on the Speaker's Bureau and you're going to go here and you're going to that fundraiser, or you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And and in both cases, for example, um, Betsy Jerkson Lonergan is very good at talking about a guy named Calvin Pitts. Um, who is an African-American gentleman who's running a job training program. I know right where it is. It's like, again, two miles from here. Uh, a community leader, committed guy. Um, she she turned around after the – you want to tell her who, who she got the endorsement of after this debate? You mean John Lewis? Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. actually traveling with her to various African-American churches in the district. Yeah. yeah. So, He's next, know, next, to him, next to her on the stage is John Lewis. Yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, when, when asked about – I don't know what – infrastructure, whatever, uh, Rodney Davis sort of veered into this weird thing where these artifacts were discovered um, at, during some dig, during the infrastructure dig, and it turned out it was from like the race riot in Springfield. The NAACP, by the way, was founded in Springfield. Um, and how he, he made sure those artifacts were given to the NAACP. You, you could just see him want to say, some of my best friends are black people. <laughs> and just, it's, it, but it was so awkward. It was such a kind of, for her, it was, it was A, B, C, D. This is the it was a clear linear story, and I do want to talk about sort of in the, in the broader sense the story we're talking about during the election year and how to avoid the noise that's interfering with getting shit done. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in this case, it was such an awkward reach for him to try to find some way to say, "Hey, black people, I'm your friend too," um, yeah. because it's a close election and every vote's going to count, and there are a lot of people out there pounding the pavement for her, and they're doing it probably for the first time or the second time they are mad as hell they want to know how to and the people who are pounding the pavement for him are old line party people that you call up every election and 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 who've done this by rote for years nobody's nobody's working for rodney davis out of passion they're doing it out of a sense of tribal An obligation. obligation yeah yeah now tell me about jason chaffetz what's going on with him you said you jason mentioned chaffetz right is, before the show and i was like i didn't hear about this jason chaffetz is a bad parent that's all i'm well, gonna say yeah, yeah parent. You know why? Because today on the Twitter, he put up a picture of himself at Disneyland standing next to a wooden Indian saying, ran into Elizabeth Warren today at Disneyland. <gasps> oh, my God. Now, my question is, for Jason, Ch other than the obvious one that everyone's pointing out that you racist fuck, mm -hmm. um, everyone pointing this out. Uh, my question is, Jason Chaffetz rather famously said that he was not going to support – if he supported Donald Trump, he could never look his daughters in the eye. Yep. So how did you go to Disneyland with your kids and never look at them? That's what I want to know. Did you walk around with mirrors looking over your shoulder? Did you, did you in some other way – did you delegate taking care of your children at Disneyland so you can go over and take this racist photograph? Because clearly you are now basically just a mirror image of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And and I just and I bring this up because a Jason Chaffetz, you know, yeah. your job at Fox is secure, your job as a lobbyist is secure, and now you're just a hundred percent out and proud racist fuck. Um, but second, remember when he was a never Trumper for two minutes? Oh yeah, and he was not going to look his child in the face after hearing he was, that he was that Access Hollywood tape, right? He was a print. This is this is what I want to remind my dear liberal brothers and sisters that David French was a never Trumper. Right up until it became financially expedient for him to to to, sh to shiv you in the back and jump back on that boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jason Chaffetz was in there. A whole bunch of people had the same kind of uh, more in sorrow and than in anger. I'm now leaving the Republican Party because the Republican Party and are now right back on that boat. Yep. And there's going to be more because, you know, if you were if you were just adjacent Republican, if you experimented a little bit in your youth, you know, you can you can you can you can kick it. But if you're a hardcore lifestyle Republican your entire life, you're not quitting the party. You'll find some way to worm your way back in. All right. So this brings me to a very important question. Yes. And I wasn't expecting to go off in this direction, but I, I do want to ask your opinion about this. Oh, my goodness. Do you think that Mitch McConnell wants to lose the Senate? 
because this week he he brought up was asked yes. an open ended question. Do you have any regrets about your career? Open ended. You know, mm -hmm. wish I had more time with my grandchildren, wish I'd traveled more around the country, wish I'd done blah, 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 you know, eaten more mm -hmm. barbecue. You know, that's really, I just love Kentucky barbecue the best. So why don't I just eat more barbecue? He said Social Security and Medicare. He said, right. I wish we could have gotten those programs, quote unquote, under control, entitlements right. under control. He brought this up three weeks before the election. He is now yes, talking about... We may go ahead and repeal Obama, try to repeal Obamacare again. Right. He is bringing up these incredible third rail issues. Mm -hmm. At this point, there is there is no bigger gift to give Democratic candidates than to say, I really wish I'd cut Medicare and Social Security and also took away health care from 22 million people. We might try to do right. that again if we have the right. votes. Mm -hmm. And I really think he's doing this because he wants Donald Trump out of the way of his party's legacy and they can't do it. And the only way he can do it is for two years to lose the Senate, lose the house and let the Democrats clean up for him. Well, I have an alternate theory mm -hmm. since you just brought this up. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have not I had... sprung this on you. I apologize. Yeah. You did. You did. But I'm, I, if I can't really bullshit for five minutes about Mitch McConnell, I'm in the wrong <laughs> business. That's what they're here for. That's what they pay their money for, Drift. <laughs> um, so let me let me give you my take on, on not well, Mitch McConnell specifically, but the Republican Party generally as well. Mm -hmm. The Republican Party going back to the 70s has always had the plan of we'll run up gigantic deficits. Right. And then we'll claim that we're poor through tax cuts. We're gonna give lots of tax cuts to rich people. Mm -hmm. We're going to run up huge deficits on purpose. And then when Democrats are in power, we're going to say, what are you going to do? We have no money. We're going to have to cut those programs you love so right. much. Because really, really, they hate, they've always hated Social Security, right. Medicare, and Medicaid. Right. First thing George Bush went after when he won on terrorists will kill you if you vote Democratic in 2004 was, oh, and by the way, we're going to privatize Social Security. Mm -hmm. And that died. Uh, the more he tried to sell it, the more it died. But here's the thing. Um, what was the, the museum that was robbed in boston when you lived there oh yeah the the paintings the, were ripped right out of the frame at the, the isabel stewart museum gardner museum the gardner museum gardner, that's right because yeah. i was actually there then i i we you know i was on a, i was with a, a corporation that was being courted by a business in boston mm -hmm. and one of the places they took us was there in the fog museum as well and we were there when the like they had roped off police cordoned off the places where the paintings were stolen mm -hmm. uh, so imagine you're mitch mcconnell and your whole life has been, I want to ram through a whole bunch of really, really shitty, horrible, racist pieces of legislation and pack the courts. And you've been working your whole life to break into the Gardner Museum. <clears throat> and you now you're in. And you've stolen Titians and you've stolen uh, Rembrandts and you've stolen Picassos. And you've been there like three years. <laughs> and the cops have never showed up. The alarm's going off. Uh, and you look around. You've had lunch. Nobody's showing up to stop you. Oh, shit, really? So you grab a couple of uh, Van Gogh's off the wall, and you go down and grab a Calder. It's big, and it's scary, and it's heavy, but fuck it. I've got a truck out back. And you spend another year or two there ripping the place off, tearing the place down, and nobody stops you. What do you do then? At some point, Mitch McConnell realized, no one's going to stop me. Uh, I've, got the, I've got the perfect moron in the White House who all I have to do is suck his dick every day and, and talk about what a brave, bold leader he is and he'll give me everything I want. I have a house that's just full of crazy people who will be, who, who in two years will be back. You know, the Democrats might take it by 10, maybe 15, maybe not. Who knows? But why not tee up the last two things on my wish list or the last three things on my wish list? And he did it by saying the rising federal deficits, which were created by his giant fucking tax cut, he said, are not a Republican problem. They're a bipartisan problem. This is these are the, the Democrats are to blame for this too. You know what, honey? You know who's to blame for the giant deficits? Both sides. Really, both sides. Both sides are to blame. And I think we can all agree that a grand bargain would solve this problem. And the minute you hear the word grand bargain, David Brooks will have a boner visible from space. Because then he can go back to being David Brooks. Then he can go back to saying, you know, he's right. What we need to do is get reasonable Democrats and reasonable Republicans together to do a grand bargain to bring the shit under control.
That's what we need to do. My good, isn't it a good thing that the, the fever of Donald Trump, all this craziness has finally broken and we can get back to the important business of taking social welfare programs away from poor people, which is what every Republicans wanted to do since the beginning of time. So I don't know that he's strategically trying to lose. I don't think Mitch McConnell likes to lose. Mm -hmm. I think he's like, if no one's going to stop me from robbing this place, right. I'm going to go right on robbing it. And I can count on Chuck Todd to sit in the parking lot playing with himself, quibbling about, um, isn't it a shame how uncivil both sides mm -hmm. are? Well, Republican Democrats are screaming, he's robbing the fucking museum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. well, you know, maybe maybe, maybe your tone both sides when you're yelling, he's robbing the fucking museum. Your tone is really too loud, you know. Yeah, yeah. Very much like Donald Trump, Mitch McConnell, I think, understands on a deep sociopathic level exactly who his party really mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And and one thing that all the never Trumpers and all the centrists and all the pundits have still not come to terms with is how completely evil the Republican Party is from top to bottom, side to side. They keep scrounging around in the corners looking for some crumb that will tell them, oh, Ben Sass has a book about how civility is important. S.E. Cup is going to blurb it. And it's a really an important book that we all should read, Blue Gal. Mm -hmm. And and that's a real thing that happened this week. Right. And the best tweet on that I heard was, in honor of Ben Sass, I'm going to think about buying his book, but not actually do anything about it. Right, right, right. So I think the Republican Party is exactly what the liberals have always said it is. And that Mitch McConnell is going to go right on fucking this country up, looting the place and leaving its broken, burning hulk of it once he's done, once he's driven from office until someone stops him. Mm -hmm. And the way you stop him is electorally. Yes, that's right. Yes, you, ha you have to push them out of office and make sure they never come back. If you have been associated with or if you've got a Republican stank on you uh, at any point in the last 10 years, you know, I don't want I know I went back to the 90s, but if you have any Republican stank on you, uh, during the Obama administration when these people were running birther shit and you were okay with that. Um, as I mentioned last week, all of the um, Michael Gerson and Brett Stevens and David Brooks had a column this week, which is in the same ballpark, all your whinging and quibbling and finger pointing hasn't, hasn't, you've never stopped a single Jonah Goldberg. Yep. You've never stopped a single Rush Limbaugh. You've never slowed down Newt Gingrich. It, your strategy is useless. Mm -hmm. It's actually a strategy designed to make liberals stop fighting back. It's yeah. not a strategy designed to stop Republicans from behaving like rabid animals because it doesn't work. It has never worked. It's a strategy to make you feel self-righteous and pure and a strategy to make Democrats bend over and take it. And, you know, uh, Sparkle Pony over at Twitter uh, – from the Sparkle Pony blog. He's an old school blogger and one of my favorites. Yes. And uh, he gave me shit yesterday for uh, quoting Jennifer Rubin. And so uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm coming around to his way of thinking that, uh, mm -hmm. and, and actually, you know, we had lunch with a podcast listener who said the same thing that, you know, are after their name. No, we're done. No, that's it. You know, yeah. no. Uh, you, David Jolly left the Republican party this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, wow. Now he's an independent. <laughs> he's an independent. I'm an independent. <clears throat> well, and, and, CNN, and, and Jennifer me. Rubin has been better than most in terms of saying vote Democratic this time. But uh, that does not excuse her uh, sitting on her hands during the birtherism movement and saying, you know, the tax cuts weren't big enough and so forth and so on. So I'm coming around to, you know, never trust a never Trumper. I think that's mm -hmm. that's clear. I'm not sure who who said it. it. I think it was Charles Blow. Mm -hmm. It was a different context, but it it's it rhymes with what you just said in a way. It's the one thing white Americans want is absolution from Black Americans. Yeah, yeah. Well, that goes Aimlessly. back to a letter that we got actually this week uh -huh. uh, from. Now, wait, I'm going to scroll down to it. Hold on, hold on. Where there it is. Uh, a letter we got that this week from our reader, Carl, our reader and listener, Carl, who did say when the media talks about the Democrats, they always leave out the black Democrats and they leave out the progressive yep. black caucus. Uh, yep. And the black caucus is spoiling for a fight. You know, they want change, uh, but they are left out of that conversation. Um, well, and the, the person who was, who was, he was referring to in the article saying, no, I do not forgive you. Yeah. I do not forgive you for shooting my child. Yeah. I do not forgive you. No, I don't forgive yeah. you. Yeah. And yeah. and this is the problem I have with my liberal allies. 
is they're say, they have such a hard on to immediately forgive people who've been fucking them over for 30 years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that they don't bother to take a second look. They don't bother. And, and so to all of you nice liberals out there, you have no authority to absolve these people on my behalf. Right, right, right. At all. Right. You do not have the you have no fucking right to forgive people who have screwed yep. this country over for 30 years and profited thereby yep. and are trying to get out from under the avalanche they created by, by shacking up in your basement and eating out of your fridge. You have no right to absolve them on my behalf until they have met my basic criteria, which is confession, atonement, repentance, and then you get absolved. Yeah. yeah. But I don't want to hear I don't want to jack shit about these people suddenly discovering their party's full of Republicans and oh my god how did that happen? And it is not our well, obligation as Christians to forgive. I, this is something I'm having a battle with church right now. Is that some of my mm -hmm. fellow church members <clears throat> want me to focus on Christianity as a stand-in for being nice and polite and civil being and nice. not interrupting people while they're eating in restaurants and so on and so forth and not recognizing that those folks are part of a movement that wants my children to die. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. get down to uh, our news roundup, starting with the federal judge rejected Paul Manafort's request to appear in court wearing a professional suit and instead ordered Manafort to behave like every other convicted felon and appear in court wearing a prison <laughs> jumpsuit. Sorry, orange is the new Imani. The uh, order from the court said every convicted felon in this courtroom wears a prison jumpsuit, and he is no exception. Mm -hmm. It was it was quite literal that. Uh, mm -hmm. You want you want to read the next one? Yeah, well, the next one's sort of a, the, this broad, sprawling story yeah. that is terrifying and disgusting. That um, Prince Mohammed bin Salman uh, pretty clearly ordered the killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Yeah, and, and uh, we're not going to get into the the really violent parts of that story. It is really no. hard to talk no, no, no. about. Uh, uh -huh. I I will say that apparently one of the people who was in the embassy at the time this happened and was probably culpable for this, and I'm trying to be as sh I'm trying to shade this as much as possible in terms of protecting our listeners and myself from talking about the violence of it. Um, one of the people involved in the embassy uh, has been killed in a mysterious car crash. Oh, no. Really? Uh, so this is, uh, and all of this is happening in plain sight. Yep. And uh, Donald Trump is okay with it. And that's what is really criminal about this, is that this is, I was, I was talking with a colleague today about how, uh, yeah, you know, John Kerry would have sent a stern letter Right. And issued some meaningless <clears throat> sanctions. Yeah. And we would have gone on with our relationship with Saudi Arabia because they own us and they are an ally in a, in a region that is still, uh, you know, a, a lit firecracker. And uh, we depend on them for intelligence. They depend on us for weapon systems. It's we're going to do what we're going to do. Uh, but Donald Trump profits from these people, personally profits from these people and his uh, behavior is not about diplomacy. It's no. about what's in it for me. And that's the difference. No, there are, I, and this is a sad old uh, story and a broken yeah, world. And yeah. this is the deeply imperfect, screwed up world that we live in. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. it, it's, and, and I am not at all comfortable talking about American foreign policy in the Middle East because it's been screwed up for right. decades. Um, what I am really deeply worried about is that now there's somebody who's cashing checks over it. Um, yeah. And I, what the other thing that that I just got to shake my head and go, really, we're going to do this? Christian Amanpour today has on who to talk about this incident? Who? Tom Tom Friedman, oh, God. who was who was right on the ball calling this guy a reformer, and she mm -hmm. wants to know if he still stands by that. And I'm like, you know, why can't why can't Tom Friedman's only two feet tall? Why can't we just put him in a little box and sail him off to an island somewhere and put him in front of a fake camera and let him believe he's talking to to Americans? For the rest of his life, why, why Tom Friedman of all the people in the world? And the answer is, well, Tom Friedman's a rich guy who's wired in the New York Times. He's a member of the club. He, you know, he he globe trots. He knows all these people on a first name basis. No, he's he he fucked up. He screwed up once too often, and that means you don't get to be have your opinion countenanced by grownups anymore. You yeah. blew it, and that's the one thing we don't do. We don't actually hold people like that accountable ever. 
because something, something, something comes along and we're on to the next thing. Well, and that, um, is, that is the other problem is that if the Republican Congress was obeying the Constitution of the United States, we would have an adequate investigation into Donald Trump's financial dealings. And we would know that the emoluments clause of the Constitution was being broken. We would have known that months ago. But we don't have a Congress that cares about the Constitution. They care about political power for Republicans. And so we're not talking about any of that. And this is, again, this is why I think in part, if if Mitch McConnell is worried at all about what Donald Trump is doing to the Republican Party long term, and maybe he doesn't give a shit. Just, maybe it's like climate change. I'll be dead. I don't care. Right. But uh, if he cares at all about the long term picture, uh, he's got to be wanting uh, the Democratic police to come in and take over. It, yeah. temporarily. Well, and, 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 as do the people who profit by this, because yeah, yeah. I, as, as I, I wrote earlier today, and I've mentioned like a million times already, Donald Trump did not destroy the Republican Party. Right. Donald Trump destroyed the illusion mm-hmm. of the Republican mm-hmm. Party that the Beltway media has been selling its customers yep. for 30 years. Yep. He destroyed the fantasy, the the carapace, the mm-hmm. shell mm-hmm. that that they have been bullshitting their their listeners, their consumers over for decades. And that's all. He just he took the mask off. This is who we are. And the only people who are shocked by that are people who make money pretending to be shocked by things like this. Um, speaking of which, mm-hmm. apparently, I thought Scott Walker was the governor of Wisconsin. Apparently, he's only a part-time governor who really never showed up at meetings. <laughs> Donald and, Trump doesn't know him at all, really. He's a coffee boy. <laughs> we never spoke uh, because the White House people have told uh, Donald Trump to avoid Scott Walker because he's going to lose. Yeah, you don't want to be associated with that. No, you didn't but, really know him all that well. So, please, you know. Yeah, gonna, <laughs> so Scott Walker is going to have to have his Trump tattoo removed, I suppose. <laughs> um, Donald Trump will not accept blame in, in, in a much larger sense if Republicans lose control of the House in the midterms. He will take He's all the credit in the world. He announced that. He has yeah. pre-announced that. Yeah. If they okay. win, it's because I'm awesome. If they lose, fuck them. You know, that's pretty much the, his yep. life's motto. Yep. Um, I win. Everyone else loses. I'm great. I deny everything I just said powerfully and emotionally with a great deal of love in the basement. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> we already talked about the in Jefferson County. 40 African-American senior citizens were told to get off the goddamn bus because, first of all, making a – it's a bus, so it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's perfect. It, could, it, could it be more perfect? Everything old is new again. We've been talking yeah. about that too. And mm-hmm. and speaking of everything is old is new again, you and I had a conversation the other night about the Gilded Age. Yeah, we did, yeah. The two candidates for governor in Illinois <laughs> released their financial statements and tax returns, and both of them – have over $50 million of taxable income for 2017. Right. That year. Not, and that's income. Mm -hmm. That's not wealth. That's not owning. That's not holdings. That's that's what they earned, quote unquote, in one year. Right. And they will earn that again this year and the year after that and the year. $50 million. Uh, We can't find a job in this house. (laughs) You know, it's, it's. And this is the story of America. I mean, it's, you're on one side of this or the other. And I think people are getting really sick of it, uh, particularly about when it comes to health insurance, that if you can't afford health insurance for your family and it's tied to a job and full-time jobs with those kind of benefits are not there, uh, I think people are real sick I, of well, this. Well, the Republican um, plan for that, as we'll get the actual numbers here, uh, is to run up the deficits. It's... Uh, <laughs> This year, the budget deficit for fiscal 2018 is going to be $779 billion, a six-year high, and a 17% jump from the, the prior period. Now, let's be clear. Deficits went up under Obama and came down. I don't mm-hmm. want to argue about deficits. I, uh, there, there are economics uh, bloggers who I respect a great deal say, don't pay any attention to that. It's, it's just smoke and mirrors. I agree with that. Yeah. But yeah. what I will say is, if you have a fetish about this, um, Republicans like to make a big deal that the deficits went up under Obama. He just spent like crazy. Yes, we were in the middle of the worst recession in 70 mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. Government had to spend money and would have had a lot more to spend, perhaps broken even, had George Bush not pissed away the Clinton surplus. Again, yep. this is the part about being a liberal that's maddening and delightful. We remember this shit, and Republicans don't. They just remember They've got a brain full of bumper stickers and talking points, and they're going to stick to them. Um, I would like to mention also that in addition to being a close personal friend of mine and a great lawyer, Michael Cohen is also a lying bastard who's totally false testimony, (laughs) lying about me all the time. He does it. He's done it forever. 
then why did you hire him as your personal attorney? Why, if he was untrustworthy and, and, a, and a douchebag? Well, untrustworthy and douchebag is the law firm I, I, I job out all my business to. So, yep. so now Michael Cohen is a lying scumbag who is totally false, totally false, totally false. If you believe, it, again, we're talking about people who believe literally anything that Rush Limbaugh craps into their skull. So there's no point in sort of dwelling on the fact that Donald Trump keeps lying all the time, except to point out that it's really important that we remember that he is the party. Yep. Donald Trump said it doesn't matter whether he mocked Christine Blasey Ford at a rally because we won. It doesn't it matter. matter. We won. Yeah. We won. Uh, yeah. Women are going to tell you what matters in November. He also said that Sears had been mismanaged for years before it declared bankruptcy. Hey, in a completely unrelated story, uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin was a member of Steve's, uh, Sears' board from 2005 to 2016, which is much longer than I worked at Sears as a stock boy. So, you know, <laughs> you can hang part of the shit on me. I'm not going to lie. 11 years. For 11 years, Steve Mnuchin was a board member yeah. of Sears. He was actually a part-time boy. He more, more of a coffee boy than anything else, really. He did. Uh, there's a tacky painting in the White House. This is the. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Donald Trump seated at a table with past Republican presidents. It's based, you know, just like those dogs playing poker uh, kind of painting. Yeah. And but Donald Trump decided to hang it in the White House because he likes it. <sighs> right. When Bob Ross looks at a painting, and goes, burn it, <laughs> burn it with fire. <laughs> no, it's not good. Uh, actually, the virtue of this painting is how much fun other people have had. Oh, photoshopping it. Uh, yeah, altering it Absolutely. and adapting it uh, and making him look yep. like a buffoon, which is what he is. So at this point, all art is political. And that's frankly, exactly as it should be. Um, Wilbur Ross, you remember, remember Wilbur Ross, he's over 800 years old. He's a little dried apple that sits on the on the chair during the cabinet meetings. Uh, but he apparently woke up long enough to shift his explanation around about why he's adding, uh, tried to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. Now, suddenly, he recalls discussing the matter, maybe with Steve Bannon. I don't remember. Uh, I don't want black people to vote, something like that. I don't remember. Immigrants are evil. I don't remember. Uh, because now he's facing a court order uh, to provide a deposition. And now it got serious. So now his memory has much been much improved by the fact that he could be really personally held right. liable for, for suing trying to rig for the, trying to the... rig the census yes mm -hmm. uh yeah. you know and the reason he wants to rig the census is to provide more seats for republicans in the in the yeah. house of representatives particularly all right georgia mm -hmm. was sued for placing fifty three thousand voter applications 70 percent of which are african-american voter applications on hold weeks before november's midterm election Mm -hmm. Also, uh, there's a backlog in Texas, Drift Glass, of uh, voter registrations that apparently have to be processed by hand in Texas. Oh, no, really? Uh, on paper, processed by hand. You cannot register online in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, we need mm -hmm. a Democratic governor in Texas to take care of that. And, you know, we've had a Republican governor in uh Illinois for a while now. Yeah, we need a, um, we need a but lot. Of Pat Quinn, who was the last Democratic governor of Illinois, did mm -hmm. a lot to expand mm -hmm. voter voting rights in Illinois and to make it easier to mm -hmm. vote. And uh, that's what has to happen. You have to have, yeah. uh, when Democrats get into power, one of their top priorities has to be expanding voting rights as quickly and fiercely as you can. Indeed. Uh, fun fact, according to the Toronto Star, uh, Donald John Trump made 129 false claims last week. This is his second most dishonest week as president. It, it's so, a record. It is in the history of the world. It's a record. Right. Uh, the Drift biggest, Glass. loudest, dumbest. Yeah. <laughs> Drift mm -hmm. I love it when yes. you do that. Um, this is like a twilight zone. It's always infrastructure week and nothing ever gets done. And and in addition to noting that this is a record-breaking week for lies with Donald Trump. Please be aware that there is going to be nothing but drama from the White House and the Republican Party and Fox News for the next three weeks. And you really need to take uh, carry a cold bottle of water around with you to splash yourself with and just focus on getting the vote out, focus on what we all need to pay attention to, winning elections. Uh, don't focus on your TV and poll numbers and horse races and the drama coming out of the Republican Party, because they are going to make this an insane time. I would also suggest if you're a Republican, also bring a bottle of water with you wherever you go, because if you order in a restaurant, <laughs> we are going to pee in your food. Remember that. Stay home. Stay home and get your Hello Fascist home meal kit. 
Trump said that Saudi Arabia being blamed for the disappearance of Khashoggi is another case of guilty until proven innocent. Yeah. What a piece of shit our president is, so-called president. What a piece of shit our president is, so-called president. If you have time, uh, put up the Samantha B link. Oh, Samantha B is, did a great job last night, and yeah, her yeah. Uh, clip, the clip of her opening, is at Crooks and Liars. Yeah. All right. Thanks for associating Brett Kavanaugh with Khashoggi. That's great. Good job there, President. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, <laughs> I bet Brett Kavanaugh would rather Donald Trump never mention his name again. Please don't talk you know? about me anymore. Yeah. I got you this job. I can take you out. No, actually, you can't. You can't fire him. Uh, Donald Trump celebrated his dismissal of a uh, defamation suit by calling Stormy Daniels horse face. So that's. Didn't he have sex with her though? Yeah. And pay her $130,000 not to talk about it. Well, isn't that insulting his daughter since he said he had sex with her? Cause he, she reminded him of her, his daughter. Cause yeah. His yeah. Daughter I horse thought face? horse face is now. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Elizabeth Warren and DNA. That's a fun story. Uh, we're not going to talk about it right. because it's noise and it's three goddamn weeks to the midterms, and we have other things to do. Right. So uh, it, it was either a, a terrible mistake or a brilliant strategy or something in between. I have no idea, uh, but uh, time will tell. The only comment I will have on this from now on is, oh, look at those Republicans being racist. Right. Tucker Carlson, racist. Jason Chaffetz, well, the, racist. This is just a, re a repeat of making the black man show his birth certificate. Right. That's all it is. That's all, it's all it ever has been. It's birtherism. Exactly. It's racism. Yep. And you know what? Let me bring up Charlie Pierce because he pisses me off. I mean, no, he doesn't. I like Charlie Pierce a lot. He, he doesn't but piss you off. He, he said something that, very wise um, on the TV the other day, which is Democrats have to learn to stop playing their game. Right. You have to learn to stop, stop caring how Republicans want to tell yeah. them to run. Stop right. worrying about how they're going to react, what they're going to do, what are they going to say. Yeah. Are they going to wait for me after lunch and take my lunch money? Probably. But then kick them in the balls. You know, I mean, that's, right. just don't stop fighting them. Do Paul Wellstone come right. right across the table and demand that they explain why being a teacher is a bad thing. Right. Don't ever accept the predicate of their question. Don't ever accept What's the your problem with Native Americans. Right. Why do you not like brown people? Right. right. American citizens who have been here longer than anyone in your family. Mm -hmm. What is your problem with that? Yeah. Meanwhile, here in Illinois, Governor Hedge Fund won the single issue gun nut endorsement, which is <laughs> you know, a rare thing for a Republican, let me tell you. Also, yeah. John Tester's opponent in Montana got openly endorsed by Citizens United and is not yeah. going so well for him now. Yeah. <laughs> Big clammy <laughs> hug from the worst people in the world. In the world. Mm -hmm. We like you. Nazis like you. People stealing our democracy think you're great. You no, know, and, and, and that goes back to what I've said before, which is boots on the ground. Republican voters do not like Citizens United, no. do want money out of politics. And that is the one place I, I don't want to. I'm happy to punch up to any elected official who has benefited from this system. Right. Democrat or Republican. But. Uh, boots on the ground. I am happy to work with my fellow citizens on having great sidewalks for everybody and getting the money out of politics, regardless of their political background. I really am. It was raising a whole shitload of money off of small donors, 800,000 small donors. Is it that Beto O'Rourke young man Beto who's so nice? He, he's ready to be taken out of Beto testing and moved into <laughs> Beto testing, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, that is the only language that the goddamn Beltway understands. When they hear money. that he's raised $32 oh. million, that gets attention from them. Yeah. And uh, oh, that's that's oh, the money. sad part, you know. Yeah. But uh, Beto O'Rourke, we are recording this on Thursday. I should explain why. Yes. Uh, your your favorite female podcaster, ladies and gentlemen, is an old lady now. And uh, her, her oldest child turns 20 this weekend. Yes, it does. So we've got to go get him Friday afternoon and bring him home. From for jail. No, uh, from college. And college, bring him right. back and have a weekend of celebration and excitement for uh, celebrating his 20th birthday is on Sunday. So uh, we're excited about that. I plan to wake that. him up at O Dark 30 on Saturday and have him come out with me knocking doors. Hey, that's so. a good idea. That's a great idea. I'm sure he'd love it, he actually. He would. He's such a political animal. So thank you, Drift Class. This was a good podcast. My pleasure, Blue Guy. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Until, until our sound editor really goes over with a fine-tooth film <laughs> and takes out all my bullshit. Um, blah, blah, and it starts all yeah. of her... 
all of her feminist agenda shit that, you know, I never get a chance to rebut. I got to plug in all that feminist agenda shit. You know, I will. All right. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website, an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is happy meal. Happy meal got his name because he's always been a few French fries short of one. (laughs) Uh, He's actually an all black kitty. He looks very much like a cousin of our Brock and Olive. uh, Olive. Uh, kitties yeah um he is d- do not be alarmed he's wearing a cone around his neck in this photo because he had a minor injury uh but he's doing okay so don't worry about the cone it's okay uh happy meals human wrote us and said on a more personal note thank you so much for all you do your show is one of the few things that's keeping me somewhat sane during these chaotic times you would be uh perhaps not amazed at how often we hear that from people yes the confirmation vote for Kavanaugh pushed me to mail in my absentee ballot application so that on election day, I can help those who need help getting to the polls more easily. Good for Excellent. you. That is awesome. I am still chopping wood and fetching water. Amen. Excellent. Thank you so much for writing that. Wow. That is great. Um, and by the way, you can visit Happy Meal with his cone <laughs> on. <laughs> That's a great name for a cat. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. I've been doing postcards to voters this week. I want to thank the listener who sent me some stamps, <laughs> yeah. some postcard stamps, and, and, and said, I'm doing postcards to voters. I know you are, too. Here's some stamps to help you uh mail yours out i appreciate that thank you i have plenty of stamps now to do that and uh it is good work uh and i'm glad to do it and i'm glad you're doing it too don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline if you can afford to buy an espresso based or pumpkin based or whatever it is beverage for yourself buy one for us this is not charity this is our job this is what we do for money thank you for supporting our show approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution and you can too See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information and pay- and GoFundMe and Patreon and merch is all there, including both sides don't mugs and both sides don't bumper stickers. Those are awesome. The P.O. Box still works just fine, too. Oh, and the P.O. Box, our postal address information is all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter or any other social media that's out there and with your face-to-face friends as well. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties strongly and powerfully deny that they had anything to do with the hairball in the hallway. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.